Hi, today we're going to be putting together a financial dashboard that compiles the information of actuals, budget, and the last six month average, and then assesses the variance between actual and budget and actual and six month average to assess the business performance. We're going to be building this in a more efficient manner so that we don't have to update the table every month, but instead we just have to update the period and it's going to automatically change the numbers for us. The file will be available for download within my website and the download link will be provided in the description below. So now before we actually get into the dashboard, let's quickly take a look at what our data looks like and what exactly we're delivering today. We are a wholesales company where we sell different types of products for a specific price. Our actuals data contains all the sales transactions from 2021 to 2023. Our budget data contains the entire budget for fiscal year 23. We're essentially going to be putting together the actual and budget information side by side to see exactly what our performance was like on a monthly basis. The approach that we're going to take is really summarizing the information in a tab called a database. The ideal goal is that every time you receive new actuals information, you could kind of just update it in this table and it will be captured in this database tab. The same with the budget, when we finalize the 2024 budget, you'll simply update this table, we'll create additional columns for the 2024 budget, and it will automatically be captured in this tab. We're then essentially going to use the database tab as an actual database, where we're going to pull the information into the source data tab according to the period that we want to assess, and then lastly, migrate the information into this dashboard tab. So now let's go over on how to do this step-by-step. If we take a look at the database tab, we essentially have all our products organized in three different categories of product volume, the average price, and lastly, the revenue. We also have the sections split between actuals and budget. The very first issue that we have to solve is that these transaction dates are not a one-to-one -one match to the periods that we have specified in the database tab. So we have to create an extra column here so I'm going to call this period index and use the month and year function to convert the dates into a text string with a combination of the month and the year that it took place in. So we can also see that there's a period index row here as well. And here I'm going to actually do the same thing where I'm going to return the unique combination of month and year for these periods. And I'm going to do this for the budget side as well. And let's start bringing in the actual data. This section is actually really easy. If you take a look at our data set, it's in a tabular format. We're just going to use the sum ifs for product volume, volume sold by the product name and the period. So our period is going to be January, and then our product is going to be the metric. So if we just copy this over here, it will look something like this. And for the total, we're just going to add these using the total. For the average price, we're going to use the average ifs function because we want to return the average, where we want to return the average of the product price by the product name and the period. And if you want to format, we can format this as a currency with a dollar sign to really emphasize that this is a dollar value that we're assessing. And then we're just going to sum here again, although this metric is not that valuable just because the average price per product really varies between each product. And I don't think we're really going to be using this metric, but for completeness sake, we'll just have this here for now. And then lastly, it's the revenue. So we're going to use some ifs to capture the total revenue per product and per period. And now we're going to calculate the total to see what our total revenue was per month. And now let's begin populating the budget side. And then I'm going to freeze column D. And this is so that when we update the budget side, we can see exactly the products that we're going to be assessing. And then for the budget data, we actually have to do the same thing where we have to create a period index where we're going to assess the month 
and year of each of our periods, like this. So now that we have that information, for product volumes, we can again use a sum is function. So total volume sold by product and by period. And again, period is going to be this, and the product is going to be this. And I'm going to copy this format here, and then calculate the total. And now we have our database. Some other pointers that I want to quickly go over is in column B, I also specify exactly what type of metric it is. You'll notice that under the product volume section, I indicate each row as a volume under the price and under the revenue accordingly. And then under the source data tab, you'll see exactly where this comes to play. If we take a look at the dashboard, we essentially need to bring in three different types of information. The first one is the actual, which is a period that we're going to assess. And let's assume we're going to be assessing July 2023 for now. And then the budget, and then the six month average. So we first need to bring in the actuals. So the way we're going to do that is in the source data tab, row four is going to contain our period. So I'm going to call this period. And starting from column E, I want column E to equal the period that we specify in the dashboard tab. So we're going to bring in the actuals here. The way I plan to do that is essentially use an index formula to reference this entire section. One issue that you're going to encounter is that these two periods overlap. So when I want to bring in the actual information and the budget information, it is going to be difficult with just the information that I have here, which is why I have another row called the scenario index. The scenario index is going to be used to separately identify each column as to whether they're actuals or their budget. So I'm going to simply just type actual. And then for budget, I'm going to call this budget. And then for our source data, we can also see here, I want this July 2023 data to bring in the scenario of actual. So I'm just going to copy this over here. And then for the period index, I want to apply this formula that we have here. So it's going to be E5 and E5. And let's begin setting up our index function. For the index, the data that I want to bring in is the revenue side. And really, you don't have to reference this only. You could reference this entire data set because in column B, we separately identify the different types of information. However, just to keep it simple, we're going to just reference the revenue section for now. So we're going to reference this index and for our rows, we just want to match the product name. And now when we begin assessing the column, it gets a bit more complicated because we now have two different criteria that we have to assess, which first is the scenario and the second being the period index. So we're going to set this up with another match function but instead of the criteria that we want to match with, we're just going to specify one and then specify the two different conditions that we want to test for. So the first test is going to be where the period index matches the period we're assessing multiplied by the scenario index that matches the scenario that we're assessing. And then we can specify zero at the end and begin specifying our criteria. So our first match is going to be our product. And then for the second match, it is going to equal first the period index and second the scenario. So I'm just going to copy this over here. And then for the total, I think we can just use a sum function. And let's just copy this format here to save ourselves some time. And now really what you want to do here is you want to bring in the budget information, the last five month information, and then calculate the last six months average. So we're going to first just bring in the last six months. So we're going to use the end of month function of the period right before and minus one and do this for an extra five months. 
and I'm just going to drag this formula across as well and drag this formula across as well. And you'll notice that it brings in the information accordingly. And here we can also bring in the budget where it equals the period we're assessing. And you'll notice that as we change our scenario marker from actual to budget, you'll notice the information being brought in also changes. So it changed from 762 under the actual column to the 777 under the budget column. And then here we can just bring in the average and we're just going to average this section over here. And we've essentially set up a dynamic source data that's going to flow into our dashboard. So if we actually switch this period to, let's say September, you'll notice the source data also updates where all the actuals are brought in for September for the actual period. And the last six months also changes compared to the current period. The budget information also switches to September 2023. And because we've also updated these periods, the six month average also updates to the most relevant period today. So let's just change this back to July 2023 again. So now let's start bringing in this information into the dashboard. I'm going to expand column B and C, which has the metric and the index that we want to bring in for each row. The reason why we're doing it like this, rather than just actually referencing the headers in the dashboard is that once you actually begin building dashboards in a company, you will often encounter scenarios where the header for your dashboard is not going to match the name and convention in your source data. And this is just something that happens when your manager, executive, or director just really wants to make sure that the dashboard is easy to understand. So you sort of have to change the wording or naming conventions here and there for the stakeholder purpose. So to bring in the actuals here, I am going to sum ifs column E because column E will always contain the actual information for the current period where the product matches the product we're assessing and I see the metric matches the metric that we're assessing. So the metric is going to equal revenue and the product is going to equal the metric that we're assessing. Whoops. I actually had to bring this one down like that. And then for the budget side, we're going to do the same thing, but instead just reference column L because we know column L will always contain the budget information. So instead of actually remaking the formula, you can just copy this formula over and then just update the sum range from column E to column L. And then for actual versus budget, we can just simply do actual minus budget. And then for actual versus six month average, we're just going to do actual minus six month average. Now, what usually happens is once you put together a metric like this, management will come out and ask you, hey, can you look further into detail as to why we're underperforming for certain products? I'm going to continue this video in a part two. Feel free to download this file and try to attempt this problem on your own in the meantime. And next week, I'll show you step by step in how to build the deeper investigation section of the dashboard in an automated manner. I hope this video helped you gain insight in how to build a dashboard and follow for more Excel tips.